Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which as usual has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with NVIDIA, specifically news that the company are allegedly going to be tapping the TSMC 7NM process in the year 2019. That's right, next year. Now, the information is not exactly telling us what cards that they will be using the 7nm process for so for example it could be the quadro series or hpc cards in general or it's possible this could also trickle down to gamers as well in other words the geforce line of cards it's also possible that this could simply be the low power type of GPUs that you would see in autonomous vehicles. After all, we have seen NVIDIA really push that and 7NM and that type of uh, environment would certainly be beneficial, lower power consumption, lower heat output, and so on and so on. Speaking about the GeForce cards for a moment, of course, we've got the GeForce 20 series, which has recently launched. We've got the 2070, the 2080, and the 2080 Ti or Ti if you prefer. So that's a pretty full lineup, but of course it is missing cards like the 2060 and below. The rumor tells us that the 2060 and below is going to appear next year. In fact, Nvidia themselves have said as much that we're gonna wait until 2019 early for the 1060 to be replaced and the 1050 Ti and whatever other GPUs Nvidia decide to launch. In the meanwhile, they're happy to just continuously sell us Pascal because they still have GPUs that remain in the inventory and honestly the 1060 is still performing really admirably. This leaves us with a couple of questions. One, will this be the RTX 2060? In other words, will it have ray tracing technology? And two, will we see a drastic bump in performance with a possibly different core? Will we see a refresh of Pascal, for example, with uh, the 2060, assuming it doesn't have ray tracing, or will it just be Turing, but with, let's say, the tensor cores removed or something different? Honestly, we just don't know yet. Now, my gut feeling is that it's probably not going to be 2019 that we see a refresh of the GeForce cards, at least in the early period. I suspect we're going to instead see much like we saw with the 12NM process where Nvidia used that for the Volta series and then later on when they felt that the yields were better they of course used it for Turing. The rumours were, and whether you want us to put stock and faith in these is totally down to you, but the rumours were a couple of months ago that Nvidia were planning to use 7NM for GeForce but they opted not to because they felt that the yields just weren't quite ready yet and they would have to have delayed the product as well. So combined with a slower launch and with um, I'm still not feeling confident in the yields this year, it just didn't make sense. So that's of course why they pushed Turing now and also why they used the 12 nm process. And honestly, I think they probably made the right decision. Even AMD are not being as so bold to push 7 nm in 2018. It's just, well, the yields are probably not going to go well for them. So what we have, of course, from Nvidia is the prospect of a 7 nm refresh of Turing or potentially an entirely different architecture. We don't really know Nvidia's roadmap that much. We know, of course, they're gonna have a successor to Turing because that's like me saying to you, well, oxygen's kind of good for you but whether it's going to be a refresh or not we don't know a refresh could be a bit like they did with maxwell to pascal it's not exactly a refresh by any stretch of the imagination instead it's almost a reimagining if you recall pascal said it was crafted for speed and while the underlying architecture was changed significantly and was crafted for speed they basically made the architecture better and faster what we did have is an architecture that did have some similarities. We could also look at the 480 to the 580. The 480s ran very hot. Uh, they had a lot of noise. They required a lot of power. And then NVIDIA, of course, relieved the 580 and the 500 series back in the day, and it fixed a lot of issues. I don't think that the Turing cards are going to be close to the 400 series. So I personally think we're going to get more a Maxwell to Pascal type of situation. One of the big ways that it could very easily improve the performance of uh, Turing 2.0, just for the sake of this video, would be to increase the number of ray tracing units per GPU. So at the moment, each SM has one ray tracing unit, and of course it's got a whole bunch of tensor cores. We've been through the architecture of Turing before, so I don't want to go over it again in this video, it's not really the place. But what we could see is just 
a very simple tweak of just adding an additional SM or an additional set of CUDA cores or perhaps both along with of course the obligatory higher clock speeds both in memory and presumably as well the core. Nvidia have a lot of options here and they don't really have any reason to release a refresh of Turing this year because the rumors are once again that Navi is going to be in the mid-range so it just doesn't make sense. They might as well just sit pretty, reduce the manufacturing costs of Turing because obviously Turing is really expensive to produce. That's one of the reasons it costs so darn much. So once they get that under control, uh, which possibly 7nm may also help with once the yields get better, it will help consumers. So it's gonna be interesting to see how all of this comes together, uh, particularly when you factor in the latest news from AMD, specifically a couple of comments from AMD's David Wang. The Japanese website 4Gamer has recently had an interview with AMD's David Wang, but there is an issue, it is Japanese. The reason I say that is because machine translation typically is what you need to employ if of course you can't speak the language or get someone who natively does speak uh, Japanese to translate it for you. So a couple of the early reports of this story were from people who were using a machine translation, but since then a couple of other reports have popped up with people who have actually uh, spoken Japanese natively and have given a translation. Now it's imperative to realize that these are not AMD's roadmaps here, but what they do is give an indication of what AMD will probably do from uh, his own opinion. According to a, a user on Twitter by the name of Kaminchi, and Saka, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, he has said that AMD will definitely respond to DXR and from his point of view, but from the time being, AMD is providing it free of charge and will focus on improving offline CG production environments and centered on Radeon Pro Render. He also added that David said that the spread of ray tracing game will not go unless they were able to use ray tracing in all ranges from low to high end. So there's a couple of things. First of all, it is in David Wang's opinion. It is not necessarily held by all of AMD's management. So if Lisa Su said, no, we're going to do it right you know, tomorrow, then obviously that's the direction the company is going in. But David obviously does have a lot of seniority in the graphics division. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of this comes to pass. It most likely tells us that some of AMD's products will focus on DirectX ray tracing in the pro uh, arena. So of course, Radeon Pro Render, that would be possibly the likes of the Vega 7nm uh, Pro uh, successor. But Navi most likely will not, at least for now, because from the verbiage they're using, they don't believe that the low end cards are yet capable of ray tracing. The issue is, of course, that we don't really know what AMD's architecture is going to bring in terms of the performance penalty for ray tracing. We don't really know that yet on NVIDIA, let alone AMD. So for us to say, well, you know, on the low end, it won't be capable of ray tracing. For all we know, AMD are working on something. I'm not saying this is the case. This is not a rumor. I'm just purely being uh, speculative here. But for all we know, AMD are really working on a technology that has like a very minimal performance impact in ray tracing. It's most likely not the case though. From what we understand, AMD's Navi architecture is going to be quite a step forward from uh, the current uh, Polaris architecture, but once again, it is not aimed at the highest end cards. After Navi, we will see the introduction of Kuma, K-U-M-A. Although there's even fewer details concerning Kuma. It was originally dubbed Next Generation. We saw that on various slides. However, an AMD employee did let it slip on a forum that no, it's called Kuma, but I can't give you any more information on that. So the performance is still under wraps and probably to be honest, they're still working on the features and trying to figure out exactly what they can squeeze into the architecture. So whether ray tracing DXR is going to appear in Navi or whether it's going to be supported purely on Navi or uh, Kuma, we just don't know yet. Another thing, you can technically run ray tracing in software, so that would be running using AMD's asynchronous compute engines and so on, but the issue with that is pretty obvious. It does actually have quite the impact in performance, so whether game developers and AMD would really choose to push that or not, we just don't know. Honestly, ray tracing is still pretty early as a whole, but I do believe the future of games will be using ray tracing. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be adopted tomorrow. I think it's going to be one of those technologies that evolves over the next several years, but I do believe that we are in the infancy of it. 
I believe that much like virtual reality, it's going to have its usages, um, but I do believe that virtual reality is probably going to be more limited in scope than ray tracing. That's my personal belief. I could be totally wrong in the next couple of years, but I do think that ray tracing is here to stay. And I do think that as the technology becomes more refined, as developers uh, become more used to it, they better able to program and leverage it as hardware improves. Uh, obviously, it's going to become less costly, at least uh, in terms of scale of performance. So I do believe that ray tracing is going to be here to stay. And finally, since we were discussing virtual reality, it makes sense for us to throw this story in. There is, a, uh, there is reports going around right now that Valve themselves are working on a virtual reality headset. In fact, there is an image that has emerged on Upload VR that does appear to be genuine. I mean, obviously it could be a fake but the level of complexity it looks like that has been put into this headset if it's a fake someone was bloody dedicated to do that it has the valve logo and just a lot of circuitry and well yeah you can see it yourself we see a built-in set of headphones steam vr sensors two cameras and from the reports it will have 135 degree field of view with vive pro resolutions and there are multiple prototypes for uh, this headset from the from the wording that's been used here from the photo it appears that these prototypes do date back to july of this year so a couple of months ago but obviously these projects do take a long time to come to light then again it's valve so you also have to take that into account what i mean by that is valve time is just like whenever it bloody is ready that's a and b valve also cancels and restarts projects all the time I'm not even going to mention the obvious game when Valve comes to, you know, a discussion. It, it's just, it's so painfully obvious. <laughs> it's not at all like I'm bitter about it not being released. Um, yeah. So, uh, whether Valve actually get this thing out to the market or not, it's unknown. But obviously, it does look like, uh, spec-wise anyway, from what we can ascertain from these limited details, it looks like it's a very impressive device. Valve have been pretty forthcoming in their support of virtual reality. Obviously, they're working on a lot of open source initiatives on virtual reality. But they're also part of the Kronos group as well. Uh, and Kronos, of course, are a very big part of virtual reality and the virtual reality adoption, along with uh, Vulkan. We've actually had an interview with uh, the folks over there at Kronos, uh, Neil Trebit. You can uh, search on the channel for that very same thing. But with that said, uh, there's not enough details to really do an in-depth dive on this, unfortunately. So I think that's a good place to call the video. With all of that said, thanks very much for all of the recent subscribers and the interactions we've received. It's absolutely amazing. So thank you uh, deeply for that. And uh, well, you know what to do. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, click the bell icon because it's not quite enough now to do the subscribe thing because YouTube is, well, YouTube. And well, if you can click a like, that would be amazing as well because it really helps the algorithm for some reason or another and with all of that said you can also find us on patreon and uh, amazon affiliate links below if you do want to help us out uh, of course totally up to you just watching the video is amazing but if you do want to buy a toast oven uh, from amazon do know that if you use the affiliate link it gives us a couple of cents with all of that said thanks very much for watching i'll see you soon take care and bye for now <music>